Today we are going to talk about a part of Indian history which is overrated way beyond the point of being overrated. We are talking about the Vedic age. So let's first understand the term Vedic age. Vedic refers to the Vedic literature and age refers to the period when the Vedas were created. Since we don't have any other sources for that period except the Vedic literature, we call it the Vedic age. The Vedic age started sometime after the downfall of the Indus Valley civilization and continues till well today in the sense that Indians still follow Vedic rituals like yajnas. But it's generally considered that after Buddha came up with the new philosophy for living a better non-materialistic non-yajna oriented life, that's when the Vedic age ends. Now let's talk about the Vedic literature. The meaning of the word Veda is to know or knowledge. There are a total of 4 Vedas. The oldest is the Rig Veda, which means knowledge in the form of Rik or verses. Sama Veda means knowledge in the form of Sama. Yajur Veda means knowledge in the form of Yajus. Atharva Veda, which is basically a collection of charms and spells. Each Veda is divided into 4 parts. The Samhitas, they mostly contain hymns and praises of gods. The Brahmanas contain information about rituals. The Aranyakas and Upanishads contain philosophy and spiritual knowledge about the soul and Brahma. There are six other texts that we include in the Vedic literature. They are called Vedanga, Shiksha. It's about the phonology, phonetics, and pronunciation of Vedic hymns. Kalpa, also known as Sutra, is a collection of instructions for carrying out Vedic rituals. Vyakran is grammar. Nirukta is the etymological dictionary of the Vedic words. Chanda Shastra. It is a text about various meters used for chanting the hymns. Jyotish, it is the relation of the rituals with astronomy and timekeeping. So the four Vedas and six Vedangas together form the Vedic literature. Now, let us see the origins of the Vedic people. It's clear that the people of the Vedic age called themselves Aryans. You can watch our other episode on the origin of Aryans for more details on that. It is generally considered that the Aryans somehow arrived, appeared, migrated or moved into the region of the Saptasindhu, where the Rig Veda was composed, created, compiled, made around 2000 BCE. So the Vedic people or the Vedic society basically comprised of pastoral nomadic clans at first. Now the Vedic religion is a very materialistic and ritualistic religion. The people were basically fire worshippers and performed yajnas. So the Vedic religion is also known as yajna dharma or religion based on yajna. The idea behind performing a yajna was that the smoke rising from the fire carries the offerings up to the heavens to the Vedic gods like Indra, Varuna and Surya. Also by doing the yajna and praising the gods, you would please them and they would grant you wealth and prosperity. And that's why performing a yajna is such a virtuous deed. The ritual of yajna would assure you a place in the heavens where you spend all your virtues and then come back to the earth again. Now these Vedic clans were led by a monarch, which was generally a hereditary position. The king was not just a tribal chief, but held a position of great honor. He led the tribe in wars and ensured the protection of life and property. The people of Vedic times lived in huts made with bamboos and wood. Also gambling was very common and horse and chariot racing was especially popular. They ate both vegetarian and non-vegetarian food. From rice and barley and beans to goats, rams, horses, even buffaloes. Now let's talk about some characteristics of the Vedic age. The Varna system was basically a hierarchical social structure. The classes were formed based on people's occupations. Brahman, they were basically the priests and scholars. Kshatriya, this was the class of rulers and administrators. Vaishya was the class of traders, merchants and farmers. And Shudra was the class under which came the remaining population. The ashrams were basically a way of life. First is the Brahmachari ashram. It was basically the student phase of life. A person was expected to learn as much as he could. Second is Gruhasthashram. It is basically household life which starts after the person gets married. At this stage, earning a living is compulsory. Also, it was mandatory to carry out religious rituals like Yadnyas. Third is Vanaprasthashram, which is basically like retirement. A person is supposed to hand over the responsibilities over to the next generation and is expected to go and live in the forest. The last ashram is the Sanyas Ashram. This was the ultimate sacrifice. One is expected to leave everything and give up all of his material possessions. He should declare himself dead by carrying out certain rituals and should detach himself completely from materialistic life. And finally, the last thing that the Vedic age gave us is the Upanishads. Just like any other religion-centric society, in the Vedic society too, eventually the people started asking questions about the validity of gods and rituals. 
विच लेट टू द क्रिएशन ऑफ द फिलोसॉफी ऑफ द उपनिषद्स एंड आरण्यकाज विच वर अ कलेक्शन ऑफ ग्रेट फिलोसॉफिकल थॉट्स अबाउट लाइफ रियालिटी यूनिवर्स इट्स क्रिएशन एंड वंस पर्पज इन इट फॉर इंस्टेंस दिस वर्स from the kena upanishad which means it is known to him to whom it is unknown he does not know when it is known it is unknown to those who know well and known to those who do not know much thanks for watching drop a like leave a comment please don't forget to subscribe our channel design hysterics get more updated videos from now click on the bell button below to get notified see you people in the next video till then it's a bye from design hysterics team